I've got one of the jaws here out of my milling machine vise and you'll notice that if I just move it around under the DTI I've got a big high spot in the centre of the jaw. A few days ago I had a crack at this with the surface grinder and I got it grinding end to end and I thought fantastic I've got it flat I turned it over did the other side again got it grinding end to end brilliant flat lovely job done. No. I've then come to measure the part and I found that I've got this crown in the top and that's exactly what I started with so it's very confused. So let me just show you why I failed. I've got a 02 millimeter feeler gauge here and that just slides straight under there. As I've engaged the magnet, the vice jaw has actually deformed under the force of the magnetic chuck. So when I've ground it a few days ago, it's been gri it's ground in the center and it's and then it's gradually worked its way out and eventually been grinding all the way along. And then I've released the chuck. And what's happened is the part has sprung back. Of course, I didn't know this because I didn't have a gauge on it. So I flipped it over thinking it's flat, done the other side. And what I've ended up with is a part that's bowed on the top, bowed on the bottom in the same direction, which is exactly what I started with, just a couple of thousandths of an inch thinner not really what I was aiming for. So to solve this problem this time I'm going to pop a little bit of 8,000 shim under there then I'll grind it. Then I'll get it back on the surface plate and check it, flip it over, do the other side. Okay so it's getting a little bit bigger 0 0.01, 0 0.02, 0 0.07, oh no it's 0 0.08 Let's go the other way, 05, okay so we've actually gone the opposite way here, I think my shim in the centre might have been a little bit too high mm. and what that's done now is it's held the centre up and the ends have magged down and then I've released the magnet and they've sprung back up, what a shame. Oh well this is all about learning so, okay I've got this re-shimmed on the mag chuck now and if I just drive the table back and forwards. We can line up the indicator with some of my mapping lines that I've drawn and we can see if it's correct. So that should be about 0 0.01, 0 0.02, 0 0.06, 0 0.07. So that's pretty good. Let's go the other way. So there's our 0 0.01, 0 0.02, 0.05 on the indicator, so now we're, we're, we're a little way off there, but I'm not sure there's a lot I can do about that. There's about 0.01 error there. We'll give that a grind and see what we've got. So I've done a few passes and you can see the, the 5 and the 4 line and the, the 8, 7, 6, 5 on this side are all gone and the 5's disappeared at the same time, the 4's disappeared at the same time and we've worked our way in and the 3's 0 0.03 line is here so they should go together and then the 2's should go together and the 1's should go together and that means I'm taking the same amount off of each side Let's have a look at this. So, top to bottom, that's looking good. Oh, we're going down just under 0 0.01, just under maybe 0 0.02. Yeah, okay, and the other way 0 0.02 low. Wow, we've managed to go the other way. Well, this is fantastic, isn't it? Right, let's turn it over and have a look at the other side because I know I've got a big flat spot between the holes now. So I've been trying to figure out why I've been struggling so much and I just swept the mag chuck with an indicator 
and found that the mag chuck itself is actually, it's flat here and then it starts to drop and the further you go this way the worse it gets. I'm about 0.01 mil here and I suspect that's been throwing me out slightly. And then my shim stacks, that's all been a bit sort of Heath Robinson. So that's probably not been the best. I've been, I've been really quite struggling with fighting the magnetism because even with the, the magnet switched off, there's still quite a, I don't know if you can see that, but there's quite a lot of magnetic force there. So moving shims around is a bit of a, a challenge. What I'm going to do, because there's so much material to remove here, 0.2 at this end and same at this end, I'm going to put this in a machine vise, drop it on the mill, run a face mill across, and then take the whole machine vise, put it on here, so I'm not affected by this error here, and I'm not having to shim, and I'll then grind the back face with it in the machine vise, and hopefully, that will get me away from any effects of the magnetism, away from any need to shim, and away from any error in the mag chuck itself. I'm not sure I really want to show you this. Let's just say it's a ways off. Looking back at the footage, you could see it was grinding a lot heavier at one end. I think I could maybe do with making some splash guards. Back to the original plan then. So I've got the, the vice jaw on a few shims. Uh, I've had about four hours at this off camera sweeping back and forwards, taking it off, putting it back on, reshimming it, sweeping, playing with the, the inherently flexible fixture that's over there and is complete garbage. The magnetism messes with everything, even with the magnet on the, uh, on the chuck switched off. It doesn't want to let go, it's pulling the shims around, it's a, you can't just pick the jaw up without moving the shim, so I've had to draw lines around things to get things back in the right places. It's been a complete nightmare. I've got it now, I think, as close as I can with the thickness of shims that I've got, so I think if it doesn't come out reasonable now, I'm just going to give up, to be honest. <laughs> Okay, so 0 0.01 low at that end. Oh, 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 oh. Oh dear, that's not good. 0 0.07 high at that end. Well, that's not good, is it? Having said I was going to give up, I've actually been and watched a couple of YouTube videos. I think it was Suburban Tool, and that's given me a couple of ideas of things to try. Now what I have noticed here is I've got a little bit of rock from the other side not being flat, which is why I've been shimming already. So what I think I'm going to do is I've got a little bit of one thou shim here. I'm just going to put that under this end. Now the way I've been using the magnet currently on the chuck, if I did this and just engage the magnet, it'll suck down in the middle and it'll bow the part. Now. On the Suburban Tool videos, the guy talks about using the residual magnetism. So I think they've got an uh, electromagnetic chuck, so they switch the chuck on, then switch it off again, and that leaves some residual magnetism in the part, and it's enough to hold the part and just do light passes. Now, with the chuck that I've got, it's incredibly powerful. Looking at some of the videos, people are able to slide parts around on the chuck with the magnet off really quite easily. And with mine, I can barely move it with the magnet off, so the clamping force with it switched on must be absolutely astronomical. So what I'm going to do is try it with, as crazy as this sounds, a simple setup like this on the magnetic chuck, but with the magnet in the off position. So I think with light passes, I'm unlikely to throw the part 
back on the surface grinder. I've got the mag chuck switched off. I've got the, the 1000 shim underneath this end. And I've just swept this back and forwards over a few mapping points and I'll just show you. I think this is the best map match that I've had so far. So there's minus one. It's not perfect. There's O2. There's our one, two, three. There's five there. Six, seven, eight. So that's the best map match I've managed so far. If this doesn't grind flat now, I've got to be seriously questioning the machine. Okay, I've got my high spot just here, so we're going to touch off just there. Start the spindle up. Right, let's just bring the, the wheel down. Oh, wow, that's literally just touched off within a, within a couple of tenths. Wow, I got that close. Right, I think what I might do is just run this over by hand a little bit. So it's going to be a bit quicker than using the auto feeds, so I don't want to be going all the way back and forwards. So I know I'm high here, so I'm just going to work this area down, and then I'll use the auto feeds uh, in a bit, I think. Let's get some coolant on. So I haven't thrown the part yet. So I'm just trying to knock down the high spot on this end. Well, this is certainly a lot faster than using the auto feed and doing the whole part back and forwards. Let's hope it uh, comes out flat. If it doesn't, I think I might be winning the award for most material ever removed with a surface grinder from one part. If I keep going much longer, it's going to be too thin to use. Okay, let's have a little look at that. Let's just turn off the coolant. Well, will you look at that? Right, so there's our little low spot that we haven't ground yet. Bring it over to this side. Okay, so it's maybe a little out of flat. They're 0.01 front to back. I don't know, that might come out with the, the finished pass. And there's our, oh, the, <laughs> that's a big low spot. There we go, there's our little low spot again. Okay, um, so I'll give that a finished pass now and just catch this little low spot. And then we'll get it on the surface plate and see if the magnetism's messed it up or, well, see if it's actually flat. So we'll come out to the top corner first. Just coming up to 0.01 maybe, creeping back to zero. Down to the other corner, zero. Let's go around the hole. Yeah, that's looking pretty good on that end. Run it down this bottom edge, just creeping up a bit there, 0.01 high maybe, and just bring it up to this top corner, 0.01, run it along this top edge, oops, along the top edge, okay, let's take it back to the centre to check we're still zeroed. Okay, that's that's flat to within 0 0.01. Now, let's just flip this over and have a look at the other side. So I've put a couple of marks on here. So now, over here, it's this high spot in the center. And then we're 0 0.01 low here, 0 0.01 low, 0 0.02 low, 0 0.04 low. So we'll touch off in the center here. And we should be grinding here. And then these two should disappear together. And then that one. And then when the 04 disappears, we should be flat. Right, let's see if it's flat. So 
Okay, so we're 0.01 low. Okay, so within 0.01 there. Looking nice along that bottom edge. It's just creeping up. Okay, smidge high here. Okay, 0.01 high there on that corner. On that whole edge, in fact. Okay, so what's this top edge like? It's looking good, that's coming back. Okay, so it's not within 0.01, which is what I was hoping for, but it's within plus minus 0.01, so within 0.02, that's within, what's that, eight tenths? I mean, it's, it's I suspect, not really that good for surface grinding standards, but for a first go, on a machine that's not got a balanced wheel, it's not had the chuck dressed. I don't think that's too bad, to be honest. I mean, it's a shame it took four days, but I've got some other work to do now, so let's get this put back together. I took so much off of the face of the jaws that I'm having to shorten the screws now to make it fit. <laughs> remember this little guy from the Machine Vice restoration video, right? Well, if you haven't seen it already, I'll put a link up so you can go and watch it. If you're interested, of course. Right, let's pop this on here. There we go. Both under flush. Right, let's just check the working area of the vice. Uh, it's trammed in. There we go. That'll do. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. Now that the milling machine's back in action and the surface grinder's working, I've got a load of little projects coming up, so I hope you'll join me next time, and thanks for watching.